This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Let's go. Sometimes if you're bold enough to say, hey, can I have that? People go, yeah, no worries. And then you get something for free. But you've got to be it. bold enough to do it. Could never do it. Could never be next to someone that did it. Patrick, hello. Hey, how are you going? Hey, good, good Pat. Pat. Do you know somebody that does this or are you that bold? Oh, no. I was the receiver of a bold asker. Oh, All right. right. Go so, yeah, my, my next door neighbour knocked on the door and said I had like, a pile of gravel that I was using um, for my garden. I had that in the driveway. He knocked on the door and says, oh, you know, can I have some of your gravel? <laughs> I said, well, no, I need, I need that. And uh, he's like, oh, what about those compost bins? Could I have one of them? I'm like, well, no, I need those too. And then he goes, oh, what about, what about the slabs behind the shed out the back? I'm like, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what, he just kept going until he found Stop something you'd give away? asking for my stuff. Which, did you just say yes at the end to get rid of him? <laughs> what is it? No, I didn't. I'm like, no, no, there's no slabs available either. Like, <laughs> I felt like, jump, like looking over his fence to say, hey, can I have something of yours? Yeah, yeah, it's, like, it's like he's been like, looking at everything oh. you have and putting things in his mental cart. Yeah, yeah. he's been and then go yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm, I've added to cart. I'm ready to go to yeah. the yeah. What about the lasagna mean, in the oven? Can I tell you that one? It's a novel twist. You know, your neighbour knocking on your door and asking for a cup of gravel. <laughs> <laughs> That's new. That's new. Oh, Thanks, Patrick. But... Bronte, hello. Oh, hi. How are you going? Hey, Bronte. Bronte. What have you got for us? Um, When I was younger, I was out for dinner with my family and my mum and my dad. And at the table across from us, there was like a um, young couple <laughs> having a birthday, celebrating a birthday. I guess it was the guy's birthday and they had a birthday cake and it looked really good. And my dad was like, I want a piece of their cake. So he just <laughs> went over and like politely said, hi, can I please have a piece of your cake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, did they say yes? Yeah, they gave him a piece. Oh it was God. a massive cake and there was only two of them. And he was like, oh. Can I have a piece of your birthday cake? Please, stranger. Oh. Okay, I'll tell you right now, if I was out at a restaurant and I had a birthday cake and someone came over and said that, I would say, yes, you may have a piece of my birthday cake. You would, but you'd tell everybody afterwards. Oh, of course you would. If that was my dad that did it, I I, I wouldn't even ever talk to him again. never the house again. (laughs) I'd never be seen in public with him again. Thanks, Rosie. That is so funny. Amanda's in Scarborough Morning, Amanda. Morning, guys. How are we? Hey, good, Amanda. Amanda. Is this something you do, Amanda? I, I don't do it often. I did it once, but it paid off. All right. But yes. there was a lady who goes to my playground that I take my child to, and her little baby was dressed in designer gear all the time. And I literally just went up to her one day and said, what do you do with all your clothes when your baby grows out of them? She's like, oh, nothing. Oh. And I said, well, if you want to give them to me, oh. I would happily take them <laughs> off your hands. My, my son's a little bit smaller than hers, and... She asked me where I lived. She dropped over a whole bag of designer clothes to me. Like, what, oh, sort, what, sort of, what sort of designer just, clothes just, are we talking? What labels? I'm talking real designer clothes. Gucci and like... No! Yeah, I got it all. Are you joking? I couldn't believe it. And you it didn't know so this lovely. woman other than seeing her at the no, playground? No, we just saw each other at the playground occasionally. So it was amazing. It's a gutsy call, Amanda. But yes. the, the good thing about when um, people hand over baby clothes mm. and stuff, the kids last for, you know, they only wear them for a week or yeah, so before, before they, they grow out of them. So they're oh, nicely brand new anyway. I'm going to give them to someone else. When my baby grows yeah. out of them, I'm just going to give them to someone else to kind of pass on the kindness. Yes. So. Oh, my God. I am. Who wants to come with me down to Peppermint Grove today for a game of Can I Have That? Yes. And, <laughs> and also, Amanda, I mean, her kid is always going to be just that bit ahead of your kid. So exactly. this, it's not a one-off. This is an ongoing situation. This be an ongoing thing. Oh, my oh, God. Amanda. You should go and ask her for some gravel too. <laughs> This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're talking about when you're bold enough to say, hey, can I have that? The one time I've done this, one time, it was when I was a student, uni student, went over to a friend's house. There was a trailer out the front with a fridge on the back of it. If they were taking stuff to the tip. No, that's fine. And I said, can I have that? That's the only time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's completely And then later sold it for 50 bucks. But being in their their house, looking at the fridge they're using and saying, can I have that? That's the sort of thing we're talking about right now. I could never do it. Nikki's in Morley. Hi, Nikki. Hi, how are you? Great, Great Nikki. Nick. All right, so being bold enough to say, hey, can I have that? What happened? Well, listen, I just, I, my disclaimer is I'm still raging four years later. Yes. Okay. Story. <laughs> yes. So I, I had a neighbour who moved in next door and they bowled down the, the old 1960s house and they go to put on this huge fancy house. Great. And then they presented us with the landscaping plan. Yes. So I was like... Why do I care what you're doing with the garden, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the landscaping plan included taking 14 square metres of the front of our property. <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Sorry. I'm like, yeah, sorry. 
But they were like, it'll be amazing. We'll square off your block. Yeah. We'll take the 14 square metres at the front and we'll put some trees in and we'll totally reticulate it for you. So, so they, right there. They weren't taking the land. They just wanted to put their garden on your land. Is that what you're saying? Well, well what happens is if they take it and landscape it, yep. three years later, it's theirs. Oh, oh so right? they basically wanted to take, can I have your land? Some of your sure. Land. <laughs> but Nikki, but so, I'll just, yeah. You I'll go- square it off. And my lovely, kind husband, as I stood there going, your house will look so amazing if we just square it off. And I'm like, no. Oh, my, my God. My husband's like, oh, yeah, let us consider <gasps> that. That would look really good. I'm like, are you? Are you joking? Insane. So, so wait there. But there's so, survey so, boundaries. But so if they yeah. did that, yeah. so you're saying if they did that. In two yeah. years. In two years' time, land. then it's their land. Is that legal? Yes. Is, that, is that a law? Yes. That's the law. I'm going to oh give God. that a go. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. my God. Like, I never thought of Sorry. that. Sorry. So now I'm at a stage, like, I, my friends are like, are you still telling that story? I'm like, I am on. <laughs> I cannot. And they're like. Okay, you need to move on. Never like, let it go. No, Nikki. do not move on Never from that story because no, I will I'm tell like, that story now. She's a young person in her 20s. I said, listen, they're going to live there for life. When she cracks her hip when she's 80, don't ring me. Don't ring me. Can I just say, can I just say, that is a very good thing to know. Because I, I never it knew about that. It doesn't seem right to me. Oh, my gosh. I, is that no, work it doesn't with, seem right. What if I give you like a, a pop lamp to someone to kind of just take the, yeah, that's the area right. that pop lamp was on? Sean, your neighbours would mow your lawn and do your retic, wouldn't they? See, yes. Yeah, yep, yep, you're in trouble. <laughs> All right, let's go to Leda in Allenbrook. Hi, Leda. Hi. 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 Did you ask for something? No, something got asked for me. Okay, okay. hit us up. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yep, um, I normally took the kid out. Um, for lunch or dinner. Yeah. One day I took them out to Hot Pot in Morley. Yes, yes. great place. Yep. Um, we finished eating already, but we got like, you know, some leftover like meats and veggies and stuff. Yeah. Yep. So basically the table next to us, well, a group of ladies as well, yeah. come up to us and go, oh, is that okay if you finish, we can have your leftover. <laughs> <laughs> You can't. No, but you take your leftovers <laughs> home. Yeah. yeah, and Lither. and we we actually looking at each other like me and my kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, we can't say no. Don't we be too mean? Well, you yes. can't say no. <laughs> and they go, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, go ahead. And they actually um took the play. Yeah. And then my one of my sixteen year olds go to me, Mum, is this supposed to be us paying or they paying? I go, yes, of course, us. But they took our stuff. Yeah. No, they're, they're, yeah, that's no, true. They yes. So did they eat it there and then or did they get it boxed up to take yes, it home? They, they had did. it there they're and so then. They're so happy. You can't so beg happy. other people for their leftover food and eat it in front of them. Because think about yeah. it, those people probably didn't even order anything. At all. They, they right. probably ordered like three spring rolls or something yes. and then just waited for, for, for people. So how did, far, So you finished at the end of the meal? Were you at the end of the meal or what, where were you in the meal? Um, we actually asked? finished. We actually finished. Okay. But we were thinking about taking it home. Yeah, of course you were. Of course you were. But Lita, had that, did you notice them before and what they were eating? Like Nathan was saying, did they just get a couple of springies or they had a meal? Um, I have no idea. I didn't look at that yeah. table, yeah. but I don't know that. No, <laughs> no you don't know that. No, you strangers know that. who are eating your leftovers. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You don't know okay, that, that is next level. You can't level. do that. You can't do well, that. Well, apparently you can. Carmel- and it works. Carmelo, hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, Good. Good. Carmelo. Carmelo. Uh, we're hearing about really bold people that just say, can I have that? What have you got for us? Uh, a couple of years ago, I was racing BMX and a Olympic BMX title was at our local club doing a fundraiser. Unreal. Yeah. So I went up, I, I, I had the ball, so I went up to her, I was like, can I have your racing bike? That's worth about four grand. He's like, if I win this race, I'll give it to you. And what? he ended up winning it. Oh, and he gave it to you. Four what? grand bike. What? So I ended up with a four grand bike and a couple of sponsorship deals from it. Are you what? joking? What? Uh, dead set. What so bike? What, what brand him. bike was it? Uh, it was a DK bike with all the all his sponsors that are giving him free <laughs> parts free. and everything. <laughs> Unreal, Camelo. So what level are you? What level do you ride at? Uh, I was I was riding at pro level, so I was riding in Carasa, yeah. Price. Yeah, I went to Queensland one. I've been all over. I've, yeah, I've did nationals and all that. Camelo, so you are the living embodiment of if you don't ask, you don't get. 
That's so you it. just yeah, I'll just throw much. it out there. If they say no, they say can no. I they... have that bike if I win this next race. Yeah, yeah, you can have it. And then you got given the bike. Oh, that would have been. That's a, amazing. Carmelo, was that a great day, mate? Oh, it's amazing. All my mates like screw you. Like we wanted yeah. the bike. Like, <laughs> I can't you say don't deserve it. It's a big ask. You know what would have happened then? I know, but if they say no, you're not forcing them to say yes. The rest of the afternoon, there's a bunch of kids running up to every single um. Can I be Can I be Can I be back? Can I be back? The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. It was a big night for Andy Brayshaw from the Fremantle Dockers last night, taking out the Lee Matthews Trophy as the AFL player's most valuable player. And he joins us now. G'day, Andy. G'day. Thanks oh, for having me. Oh, congratulations. Oh, Andrew, what's it like to Thank win an you. award? We've never done one in radio. <laughs> Is it a good feeling? <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a very special feeling last okay. night. A really good night. So this is the award with that all the other players voted for their for the best player, and they they settled on you. Every opposition player. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was an awesome feeling, um, and it didn't really sink in until um, we were all sitting up on stage, and I was looking around at some of the um, players that were sat beside me, and yeah, to think that they had all. Um, voted for me as, as the most valuable player for the season. It was it was an awesome feeling. Yeah, you'd had an amazing year, um, Andy, all the way through. And but I, I don't, I I could see or feel what you're thinking when you're up there. Like you're looking at people throughout your life that you've kind of had as heroes. Yeah. Yes. And now they're voting on you as as the best amongst their peer group. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it really was. And um, yeah, I mean, I've grown up. Uh, yeah, supporting these guys and idolising them and then, yeah, like you mentioned, for them to sort of um, recognise me as, as the most valuable player, it's something I'll, I'll never forget. I would like to have you for you to have had to campaign like you do when you yes. want to be class president, you know, yeah. like so you walk around with, <laughs> yeah, with vote for Andy Muffins and <laughs> um, like make up little badges and giving them out to yeah, people. No. But, you know. Didn't quite get to that stage. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, let's not forget All-Australian as well. That's, oh, yeah, mate. I, I can't believe you're the MVP, though, and they named you on the All-Australian bench. What the hell? <laughs> uh, no, I was having a bit of a laugh about that with uh, Lockie. He says, the first time you make All-Australian, you have to be on the bench. So, no, nah, <laughs> just happy to be a part of the team. Yeah, well, it was great, a great yeah, achievement, a great obviously. Um, how did you celebrate, mate? Did you get loose as a goose? Yeah. A couple of funnels? What happened? No, um... We had to keep it pretty tame. Um, obviously, a big big game next weekend. So my brothers were having a couple of drinks, but I just stayed on the uh, Coke Zeros and, uh, yeah, had a pretty quiet night. Coke Zeros taste terrible. I think so, too. Coke yeah. Zero, that's my, it's my favourite soft drink. I go to. Yeah, it's you my go best to. mate's favourite as well. It's just like Coke Zero, anything like that that's had the sugar taken out. It's just taste. It's, I'd rather not just partake. I don't want to participate if it's got no sugar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, each to their own. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I know I don't drink soft drink at all. So, but, uh, yeah. It's, I've been, my mate's in that Pepsi Max, and I kind of feel the same. What is the point? Yeah. Now all I do is I drink, like, Mount Franklin, Um, you know, that, that sp- sparkling water with, like, a hint of real juice in there. And it's like, ugh. Oh, you're living. It's, oh, no, 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 it's not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andy, what I like last night is uh, um, the story that um, Danger got you to tell about your brother trying to stitch you up, Hamish. Could you fill yep. everybody in on that one? Because I thought it was lost on the room and it wouldn't be lost on this room. Yeah, um, yeah so essentially uh, the whole family was meeting at a family friend's house um, that I'd never been to. Um, and my myself and my girlfriend Lizzie were late. Um, and we had flowers for the wife. Um, anyway, Hamish, I, I messaged the group and say, oh, which number is it? Is it 72 or 74? Because we couldn't um, tell by the car parking situation. Yes, so yes. Hamish goes, messages in. He's like, yeah, mate, 72, come in. We're all in the air just having a drink. And <laughs> I knew that Hamish, Hamish loves to try and um, stitch me up. So I called him just to confirm. I was like, mate, please don't don't lie to me here. Like, is it actually 72? He's yeah. like, yeah, mate, 72. Yeah, okay. Lizzie and I walk into 72. Oh. Um, this lady opens the door. And I... I'm not expecting, well, I don't really know what the, the wife's going to look like. So we just assume this is her. And I'm like, oh, you must be um, the wife of um, Dad's mate. Um, yeah. And she goes, oh, no, my, uh, it can't be me. My husband's uh, recently <laughs> passed away. Oh! <laughs> did you have to give her the flowers? <laughs> what did well, you do? We didn't, we, sorry, we didn't know what to do. Um, <laughs> she had a bit of a laugh and she ended up recognising who I was and, and thought it was quite funny and ended up sending us uh, the next door down. But. When I came in and, and told that story to the whole um, household, Hamish realised oh. how 
funny he thought it was and how mortified myself and Lizzie were. Yeah, yeah. Can I just that say, is, anyone that has recently lost someone that decides to, yes. to tell someone about it, to, like, like, you know, oh, my husband, you didn't have to tell me that. You could have said it's the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have to tell me your husband passed away? I know. Yeah. I know it's probably yeah, top of mind for you, but keep that to yourself. Okay, that is so funny. Andy, um, let's also revisit the magic of when you had to pay for Sean McManus's groceries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I think Shawnee had been loading up. It must have been a, a, at least a weekly shop. He ordered the house down. Um, and then uh, had to scoot. So this young this young girl at Bullworth came up to me and said, excuse me, I saw you talking to that man before, but um, he actually hasn't paid for his groceries. If you're any chance you can uh, get him, call him. And I didn't have Shawnee's number at the time, so yeah. ended up having to just... Uh, Save him once again. Tap tap the card, and uh, <laughs> no, nah, he ended up he ended up coming around once he figured it out. That's the number yeah. eight yeah. legacy. You wear the number. Yeah, this is go, the, this is what happens. Yeah. You have to yeah. do this yeah. all the time. Um, if you if yeah, you no. if you're free this afternoon, and Sean's thinking of ram raiding a footlocker. <laughs> um, if you could. <laughs> Just pop in afterwards and just fix them up for that. That'd be great. Hey, um, uh, what a stitch up! I, I want to know uh, what sort of social media you follow, um, Andrew, because there's a, a, a social, uh, an Instagram account here that I thought you'd be all up. It's, it's Andrew Brayshaw is hot. Um, mm, Instagram. Well, yes, um, Andrew Brayshaw <laughs> of course is you'd hot. Follow that, so Andrew you? underscore Brayshaw underscore is underscore hot. Um, there's 17 posts, 66 followers. Um, they're following 44 people, and it's just got various pictures of here, here, here you are um, in front of the microphone, and it's just kind of neat, sexy. Uh, that was from last night. A <laughs> oh. photo from last night. It's a screenshot, okay. actually, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I might have to give it a follow. Here's another, here's another one here. <laughs> Snaffle, MVP, boss, uh, boys, and then yeah. like a little I love yeah, love. Yeah, look at that. Mate, eh? Mate. Oh. Everyone no, give it a I'll follow. I might have to, yeah, I might have to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Andy, it has been an amazing year for the Freo Dockers, but it, it gets real. You know, Ross yeah. Lyon used to always say that um, the season's all about getting a spot in the starting grid, and now it really begins. Are you are you feeling that? Um, yeah, there's definitely a sense of that um, at the club. I, this week's main focus has been recovery. Uh, it's been a long year for a lot of players. and um, this Yeah, this week, just getting your body right, um, cherry ripe for for the next month to come. And, um, yeah, so starting on Monday of next week, that's when we'll really look into um, Western Bulldogs and um, really start, yeah, looking towards Saturday night. Um, it's really exciting. And, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, this is where the real stuff begins. And mm. some of the players who have experienced it, um, Fifey, Dave Mundy, James Ash, guys that have played finals, are, um, we're going to definitely lean on them a fair bit because I'd say the majority of the playing group have never been there. So it's an exciting time um, for the club and, and for all the players involved. I know you're taking just one game at a time, of course, mm. And I, but but say if you're an Olympian, right? <laughs> yep. So you go to the Olympics, usually you come back and a lot of them get tattooed. Is it the same for premierships? Yeah, yes. lot, yeah, for premiership uh, tattoos. Yeah. What are you thinking, Andy? Yeah, my brother, Angus, uh, got a premiership tattoo last year on his butt. Yeah, on yeah. his butt. So, yeah. On his butt. So I, uh, if we do, if we're lucky enough to win, win one, I think I'll have to. Just you flat flag mantle, yeah, cross, yeah, your, yeah. cross your butt cheeks. They both chuck yeah. and brown eyes at each other. One's yeah. got a docker thing, one's got a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Just be full on. Yeah. <laughs> Love your work, Andy. Yeah, well, it's going to be great, mate. Congratulations. congratulations. Great yeah, it is, Nat. It's yeah. a fantastic honour to be voted by your peers. Congratulations, mate. Look forward to a great finals campaign. Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, and uh, Sean will meet you in the uh, checkout area of Absolutely, mate. I'm going hard at this time. <laughs> <laughs> See you there, mate. Thanks, Andy. See you, mate. Nathan, Nat and Sean. We are talking about when cramps strike at the worst possible time. Hello, Daniel. How are you going, guys? Good, How you mate. Going, what have you got for us? Uh, well, I was driving along at first, and um, I got a manual car, as you do, and uh, <laughs> you, you know you get them cramps in your feet first, and, and your toes, you know, do the old D's up, and, and it's only the one or two toes, and you're trying to push your foot down to get rid of yeah, yeah. Well, I did that, and that went away. That was all good, nothing, nothing dramatic, but then... I booked myself in for a massage, and that I'd forgotten about all that. That'd gone away, and I've got a truck driver, so I thought I'll go and get you know a bit of a rub down for the back. Oh, yeah. The old uh, lactic acid building up. Yeah. And yeah. Went to one where you uh, have to take off the clothes and bear all as you do, and lay down and just you know get your massage. And one of those. Eh? Massage, <laughs> I've, I, I've got this almighty cramp in my foot, like you would not believe. I felt my feet just going to all like just push forward back, and I've gone ah oh, ah, oh, and this lady. Just jump out. What, what, what have I done? I, said, no, I haven't no, given you a happy no, ending yet. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a conscious seizure or fit or something. I was absolutely feeling so bad, but I couldn't 
spit out my foot, my, my cramp, my leg, and I ended up staying my foot. And she's just all of a sudden from standing back ready to hit me with a bat, yeah. she's grabbed my foot and just started pushing it all different ways. Oh, it come from here and on your leg and up here. And I'm just, I don't care where it's come from. Just get rid of it. <laughs> it was just absolutely. I don't know whether I was more embarrassed or her. At the end, she said, oh, I said, I'm sorry, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. She said, oh, it's not really because you sort of stood back like you're ready to run out the door. <laughs> oh, my God. I love how that started. You, you, yes. I think we've all had that foot cramp when suddenly one of your toes starts yes. coming up. And you're it's going, like, what is it Where doing? are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Dad. Dad. Sally's in Pippa Lake. Morning, Sal. Uh, Morning. Okay, Hi, Sal. Sally. When's worst time to get a cramp, Sally? So I was at my graduation um, and there was about 100 people there and we had – it was military, like, graduation. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. And, um, at, like, all week we've been doing, like, sport and all week I've, like, been do- like getting cramps in my leg, but I just stretched them out. Yeah. But at graduation, I couldn't move. Oh, yeah. I would, otherwise, I got in trouble. <laughs> and of course. I felt, oh, because oh, you have to be oh, all, so like, you stand to attention, yeah, yeah. Sally. I felt, I felt this cramp coming and I was like, no, oh, my God, I can't, but not right now. And I felt so... Straight, right on my face. So you just <laughs> fell forward. Yep, I fell forward, and I got a blood nose, and because no one could move, to all the me- like the, the two medics like came running, and, and they picked me up, and they ran me to the thing, and that they, they put me like to the side, yeah. and was like, "What's wrong?" And I said, I "Had a cramp." <laughs> What's wrong? So would have thought they fainted. Exactly. Oh, such a big moment now. Yeah. She's fainted. Sally, where was your cramp in your legs? It was like, um, like my thigh, kind of, like yes, in the back, side. the back of my thigh. Yeah, yeah so hammy, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then it you, was just, so bad. you felt, you felt face first, blood nose, and, and then they just, um, and they yeah. just like get a broom and sweep it to the side. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, take her out the back and shoot her. You can put her hands out. She's saluting. <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know. Amazing. You're listening to Nathan, Nat, and Sean. We heard a few uh, adventures of um, Amy, Tim and Ellie just trying to buy and sell things on Marketplace and Gumtree. Sally me's dreaming. Yeah, yeah. yeah it can yeah, be difficult it can, sometimes. It can be it's a minefield. The, I guess the one for Amy is that uh, she could make a quit out of it. Yes, well. by modelling her feet to some creepy guy posing as a girl, um, wanting to buy her sandals. Lives in Averley. Hi, Liv. Hello. Hi, Hi Liv. Liv. All right, what happened when you were trying to sell something? You okay, so... Yesterday, we were going to buy one of my dream cars, a Jeep Wrangler. Oh, yeah, yes. right, eh? I was so, so excited. We get there. Everything's going great. Signing the paperwork. We transfer over the money. And then I step back, and I'm like, what is that on the door? Yeah. And I take a closer look and scratch into my door. Yeah. And the black car is I love D I. <laughs> so can you say, did you put that in there? Done deal. <laughs> she said, and it was it was no good back. That was it. And she yeah, said, oh, not, I, where about, I sorry, it. whereabouts on the car is it? On the door. It was literally right on my driver's seat door, <laughs> like door, like it's right there. There's no missing it. Can you put it? <laughs> can you put it at the end? I'm um, like Cheney or something. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm hoping we can I buff it out or something because it's pretty obvious. <laughs> oh, oh what, about, what about what about turn the turn the D into an R? I love Rick. Yeah, and Morty. <laughs> um, how come you didn't notice it the first time? Yeah, because he's excited. Um, I think I was just so excited. I didn't look for any faults. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't want to oh, see them. Live. So, what are you That's... doing? What are you going to do with it? You're going to just get some little touch-up paint. I think so. I'm hoping like my partner can buff it out or something. Yeah. I don't ah, know. Buff that out. <laughs> 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 I hear they can be yeah. buffed out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liv. Oh, Liv. Evie's in Eastwick Park. Morning, Evie. Morning. How are you? Oh, good, good evening, Evie. Evie. Okay. What happened? Um, so I sold a. $20 fish tank once upon a time, yeah. um, put it on Marketplace, on Facebook and, you know, and I got a message from this guy and he looked a bit sus, so I didn't really want to do one-on-one, you know, yeah. give it to him one-on-one because I lived by myself at the yeah. time. Oh, yeah, so I said to him, hey, like, you can either transfer or leave cash in the letterbox, and he said, okay, I'll leave cash. So I left it at my front door and whatnot, and he messaged me, yep, I've got the money in your letterbox, thank you so much. So the fish tank was only $20. I went in the letterbox and I had $40. And I was like, hmm, I'm not yeah. selling you, I'm keeping that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then about an hour later, 
I received a big bunch of flowers to my door. <gasps> and I was like, I don't have a boyfriend or a, anyone that would send me flowers. Mm-hmm. So I, there was a little note. Yes. And it was like, too easy. Thank you so much um, for everything. You are gorgeous. Oh. I could, I'm so sad I couldn't see you in person. Oh. There was something else. I don't remember what it said, yes, though. Yes, yes. Um, and it was like, love your gum tree admirer. Oh, love your gummy Gee, Evie, admirer. This, in the movie, sounds, this is a great meet Oh, cute. my God. And oh so is, God. he must be gorgeous. Yes. And so are you married now? Oh, no. <laughs> he was about 60. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was married because mm. I looked at his profile when oh, he had kids. Oh, yes, mm. yes, yes. Yes. And um, I messaged him asking him, did you drop me off flowers? Yes. And he was like, please don't tell my wife. Please, please don't tell my Please don't kids. tell my um, wife. He's like, we can keep it MIA if you want. MIA um, no missing an action. <laughs> yep. Oh, wait there. Are you so, joking? So the twenty dollars was no. just a bit of a like, well done for being Evie. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and then I throw the like flowers. you, the, the, the good old I like you. I'm interested. Twenty dollars. And now he's your sugar someone. daddy. Oh, he wishes. Evie's hot property. Evie, Evie you stop do, being so oh, hot. You do realise, <laughs> Evie, he's been watching you ever since. <laughs> oh, I was a bit scared. I've never blocked someone so fast in my life. I was a bit. Hasn't been sleeping by myself in my own house. Oh my yeah, God. I bet. Oh. You, took that, not, you took that extra $20, good. though. So, you did. You know, that's yep, on you. He bought your heart. <laughs> For 20 bucks. Signed, sealed, delivered. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Had a chat to our very big boss. He's the CEO of the entire company. Yep. Based in Sydney. We hardly ever get to see him. And yesterday we had a breakfast date with him and we forgot to take him. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So he was wandering around here. He was crying in the hallway. He didn't know what to do because Perth's so scary. We're at the restaurant waiting for yep. him. Wait, wait, like, where is for he? Yep. So then up. Amy, our producer, had to panic and get him in her car and she's freaking out because she has two children. <laughs> You're like, messy. oh, my calculator off. Then Amy drove him down there and he's walked in there and gone, hey. And we're going, <laughs> you forgot oh. me. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> so we thought that maybe it's not the best career move, so no. we want to talk to other people that may have done something um, not too good to their big boss. Hello, Mark. How you going, guys? Good, good Mark. Mark. What did you do to your big boss, Mark? Um, I backed over his car. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, run us through right the over. scenario. What happened? Well, we're in the in the yard in the morning and um, running running a bit late. And the boss is getting a bit upset, but the truck wouldn't start, so I had to jump start the truck. And um, after I got it started and that, he's just like, you've got to get to the site. So I didn't realise that um, he'd parked behind me and I put it in reverse and I backed straight over the front of his car. No, oh. is it a, is it a, was it a good car? Oh, no, he, he ended up by getting a better car afterwards. Okay, but, um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but through all the, you know, um, frustration, he's going off his head at me and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's like, well, just get out of here, just get to the site. And I'm like, well, I'll have to jump start the truck again. Because <laughs> 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 Can you give us a hand just That's to give just us a push? Awkwardness around. And also, so there weird. seems to be a car stuck in the mud flap. <laughs> 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 that is so oh, awkward, Mark. Good on you, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. Bree, hello. Hello, how are you? Hi, Hi Bree. Bree. What did you do to the big boss? Uh, so um, I was doing FIFO and we had uh, the big boss of the company come up and we had a game of friendly cricket. <laughs> um, and so he was trying to show off and he was bowling and I was batting and um, I've gone for a big swing and hit him straight in the nut. Oh, <laughs> So he was. Uh, ha- you hit the ball into him. Into yes, I did. Yes, yeah. his two balls became yeah. three balls yeah. for a short time yeah. over his yeah. lawn. Yep. So um, he ended up having a lot of time off work. Had to have surgery. Oh, oh. surgery! You really hit yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, and he lost the ball. Literally. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, how funny! I'm yeah. um, Bree. Yeah. You <laughs> destroyed your boss's testicle. Do you still work for like, that company, Bree? Uh, I was with him for a couple more years, but no, he didn't. He, I think, he left after that. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Bree, that would have been yeah, the most agonising moment. Anyway. Can we just go back to yeah. the bit where it was a friendly cricket match? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, Bree. Hold that ball. Bree, I mean, we you just... You would have been yeah. a cult hero at that workplace, I reckon. Oh, but we couldn't We coun't joke about it for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Oh, poor sense of humour. All of hey. a sudden, yeah. our big boss, Pete, oh should be God. feeling a lot better about himself. I know, because he he's leaving with Perth with two testicles. So far. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still got another five hours That's before right. he leaves, mate, so we'll just wait and see. Jeez. <laughs> the day is young. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're talking about 
things that you might have done accidentally or otherwise to the big boss and whether that was a career limiting move. Hello, Kat. Morning, guys. Hi, hey, Kat. Kat. So, uh, look, I'm pretty sure nothing that you say will be as bad as um, destroying one of your boss's testicles, mm. which we've just heard a little <laughs> bit before. So, but give it your best go. Probably not. Sorry. I was working in a hospitality venue and it was recently open. And um, the boss's dad was arriving, who he was a part, you know, in partnership. And he wanted to taste all the new food and make sure everything was running smoothly. So, it was lunchtime. And he'd order all these little tasting um, platters. Yep. And I was walking over to him to deliver his lunch. <laughs> and oh my goodness, I felt my hand slip. No. Oh. And the porcelain plate went flying out my hand, yeah. hit the ground. Yeah. And just the plate smashed yeah. and sliced his shin open. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wow. cat. I mean... You Good porcelain. Make that happen if you tried. Do you know what I mean? I was shin just open. horrified because Cats. he was a mature gentleman oh, and he was on blood no. pressure medication. Oh, so the blood was just He's flowing bleeding. out of him, wasn't it? So what the do you do, Kat? The blood was flowing. Oh. I like looked at one of the young trainees. I was like, "Quick, get the clean up sign and put it out." Yeah, and oh, well, maybe stop the bleeding first. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Because there were so many people in the bar yeah. and there's people hanging around. I was just mortified. So, you know, we've got paper towel and there's porcelain in his leg. Yeah. Porcelain And in I was just leg. horrified. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. This is like my boss's dad. I've lost my job. Yeah. But he was fantastic. And I just oh. felt so bad. Yeah. And the next day he comes hobbling in with a big bandage wrapped around oh. his leg. Oh, did And he? he's like, it's fine. It was an accident. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, so mate. that was my experience. You must be very well done, attractive. <laughs> yeah, well, are you, Kat? Did that save you? Sorry? Gen- being generally hot, I reckon, is what saved is that you sa- That must have saved you. Must have. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah, it saves me in a lot of situations. Yeah, that's yeah, true. true. That's true. Uh, thanks, Kat. Jason, hello. Hello. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. What did you do to the big boss? <laughs> so, back when I was younger, doing IT support, um, so HR sent us through... Um, the authorization to remove a person's network access email, basically clear them from the system. <laughs> yes. Our GM and one of the police had identical names, <laughs> and they didn't differentiate who it was. Jeez. So we just took the first one off the rank and yep. cleared everything. So his access, email, you name it, everything cleared. All of the work that um, he'd done, everything. Basically, it- yeah, well, it was the GM that count we actually removed. No. And it was, yeah. he lost. It, like, like um, email accounts and everything gets back up yearly it goes to the service or yes, remotely. Yes. Where he lost his years worth of mail. Oh. Access everything. Because <laughs> <laughs> it all happens all virtualized. He's just topping everything was completely gone. So what happened with that after he, that he result, He took it well, I'm guessing. Yeah, how did that go down? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, he, he, he took it with like, a grain of salt. And it was like, you know, it wasn't actually our responsibility to find out who it was because HR said here's yeah. the person's details everything and because the fact that there was two people's identical names we just took the first one off the rank yeah Jack, you know what okay, that's so a here's big, the thing that's right that's a big one would you, would you rather your shin cut or would you rather someone stuff around with your digital footprint oh, most shin. people will say uh, cut oh, my shin, shin. Yeah, cut absolutely shin. most people will say cut my what shin what about testicle would you give up a testicle no nah. <laughs> well Sean already gave up two when he got married <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll get them back, no? Yeah. Oh, One day. <laughs> They're buried in the hills, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> buried deep in the ground in the hills. They're not, gonna, they're not coming back. Good <laughs> idea, Jay. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Oh, time to catch up with our West Coast Eagle, Jeremy McGovern. He's come in. He's a bit down in the dumps today, the actually, guys. <laughs> yeah, Gov. so um, as we know, uh, Book Week's been happening. Mm. Um, oh. Amy, our producer, so I just got off the phone to her daughter, Charlotte, who's dressed as... Thelma the Unicorn. Thelma the Thelma Unicorn. Unicorn. Lovely. Mm. And she, she, she had the beautiful the book, no. sparkly tail. She did, and she, she made me read the whole book with her by yeah, just like putting horn. the book way too close to the phone. I couldn't <laughs> see anything, Charlotte, by the way. But she looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Gov, and Gov came in and said to Gov, oh, how was Book Week for you? Take it away, Jeremy McGovern. <laughs> I've let my son down so bad. <laughs> uh, we've forgotten his debut, first ever book week. And Me just... and my partner, Maddie, have completely forgot about it. So what day was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be on Monday. So mm. you've dropped, you dropped him off me at school. school? So I didn't. So this partly Maddie's fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mostly you said Maddie, before you said but mostly. It's just Maddie's as much fault. mine. Um, yeah, she dropped him off. <laughs> 
And then I didn't know, so I had no idea. And then I seen one of the parents put a photo up of their son <gasps> on Instagram. <laughs> And you, dressed and you, up and, and I've panicked. Just... Oh, it dropped and I called Maddie straight away and you could hear in her voice <laughs> how upset she was to tell me that we forgot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've completely forgot. Luckily, luckily the school was so great and amazing yeah. and they um, had a couple of spare dress ups. They for dressed those, him as a schoolboy. For those. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, they, but Gov, did Maddie think, I've got, to, I've got to take him out and just whip him home because it doesn't matter yeah, if he's 10 minutes late. You know what I mean? So once you see it, you go, oh, quickly oh, get home. I, was, I sort of mentioned that, but she was... Um, I think she was a bit shocked. I reckon she didn't know what to do with it. Was she nice. close to tears? Sorry? Was Maddie close to tears? Yeah, you could tell she was pretty upset. Oh, because no. yeah, it would be, oh, and this is for both of you, the bad parenting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, the, we're those parents at the moment. We need to lift our game. Yeah. Um, so uh, did he have a fun day wearing lost property? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah he had a great day. He's got um, head loss and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything else now, but it was great. <laughs> does, he, does he have a favourite book that he would have dressed as? Like, have oh, you talked about what he might book. do? He would, have, he would have wore something to do with Spider Man for sure. Yeah. Spider Man. Um, oh, you can't get those outfits anywhere, can you? No, no, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Probably only got six we've at only home. got yet six or seven at home <laughs> sitting there waiting. Oh god! So yeah, no. can we move Nail. on from this? Nail. 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 Now Nathan told us before, but you need to hear this: what happened to him when he went along as the dress opposite up for one day? It was the opposite. Though. So when I was younger, um, my brother was having it was Halloween, and my brother was um, class was having a dress up party. So when mum, I came home from school, mum goes. Uh, is your class having one too? And because my brother's was, I went yes, of course it is, because mm. that was my mm. belief. So then I went to school the next day um, for Halloween in as dressed as a vampire clown, <laughs> as one does, um, with a plate of fairy bread, and then um, proceeded to watch the rest of my class rock up in their school clothes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know. So what's here I, am. I know. Here I am. Imagine the whole class doing a whole day of learning, <laughs> and there's this one vampire clown. <laughs> and then at lunch, that vampire clown sitting around all of his plain clothed friends, eating fairy, fairy bread. bread. <laughs> <laughs> Did the vampire clown at least share, share his the fairy, fairy bread? bread? I don't think people want to have no, too much to no, do with the vampire <laughs> clown. <laughs> friends. The vampire was friendless. Vampires, you know, like it's hard enough to make friends anyway. <laughs> it's tricky. Oh, it's a mind field. Yeah, well, that's not a great start. Yeah, it's not a good start. We'll, back. So, yeah, we so will. next year we're going above and beyond, yes? Yeah, oh, mate, 100%. Oh, he's going to be the vampire. Yeah, the vampire <laughs> clown. The vampire clown. clown for sure. <laughs> Just got to find a book that's got a vampire clown in it. And well, I'll write right, one. I've got a year. There we go. Yeah. Exactly. You can make this happen. Nathan, Matt and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.